didn't quite do it, but still notable regardless. Let's head into Massachusetts, Bedford exactly. That's where we find meteorologist Mike Seidel. Mike, there were three Mikes on this weather underground. You got Mike Bettis, we had Michael Page earlier, now we got Mike Seidel. <laughs> um, but I, I, I managed to get them all right. There you go. How can you, you know, mess up the toss, just throw it back to Mike and somebody will answer. Uh, Good to be out here. Look at this beautiful scene here out here in this backyard garden here uh, outside of Boston and Bedford. And look at the snow. I want to tell you, this is fresh snow that has not been touched. Boy, how much is it? 18 inches, up, almost up to my knees. This is what fell yesterday and last night. We were in Lowell. Let me show you what it looked like in Lowell. By the way, in Lowell, we had two observations, one 21.2 inches, another one right there at two feet at 24 inches of snow. But look at it last night, we were up from 7 to midnight Eastern, wind and snow gusts to 25 plus miles an hour, snowing at 1 to 2 inches an hour. I mean, we just got shellacked uh, in Lowell. But a big difference between Boston and even out to I-95, you go about 9 or 10 miles, Logan Airport, 1.2 inches of snow. And you get out to 95, you're up to about 18 to 20 inches of snow. So that's what happens with the coastal front. And it makes a big difference in where we stand now for the season. Logan has had about 24 inches of snow. They're really right at average. Meanwhile, in Worcester, which had over a foot of snow, they're at 52 inches. They're at 148% of snowfall for the entire year, for the entire season. They only need another foot, and they've already hit their average of 64. And they may get some of that uh, in this area by Sunday, but just pretty out here. The snow, nice and deep, uh, not crusty on top. It is almost a little packable. Temperatures today at Logan up to 40 degrees, so the roads are in great shape. Anything that was salted and plowed is clear and has dried off tonight. But as Chris Bruin mentioned, anything that melted any water, even out in our parking lot here, there's a little bit of black ice. So watch that in the morning on the untreated unplowed roads from last night and this morning. Mike Bettis, pretty pictures, great day to shoot some video, uh, take some stills, and enjoy the snow because it's not often that uh, I've been out where you, you're walking through almost 20 inches of snow. That doesn't happen very often. Yeah. No, that's this is the fun stuff too. And again, you get a nice kind of uncompromised, no footprints or anything landscape. Boy, that is just there's nothing prettier, right? And what you've got behind you, Mike, is a postcard. Right. It's fantastic for sure. Mike, thank you so much. And we'll get more live reports from our teams out there. Yeah, snow angel kind of weather. Uh, yes, this is probably a, a guaranteed a great place to be in about two months or three months when everything greens up and the snow is gone. But tonight we're out here in the back garden of the hotel we're at. It's just very pretty. We've got the lights above us, the lights in front of me. And we've got about 18 inches of snow on the ground. I saw the Met, uh, Bedford measurement of 17. So 17, 18 out here. There hasn't been much settling. Temperatures tonight are right around 30. Today we got up to 40 at Logan. So the roads are in great shape. I'm talking about roads that were salted and plowed. In fact, I was out on the highways around 1030 this morning, uh, 95, 495, and 3. And no problems at all. It's just like they were wet. But again, streets, neighborhood streets that were not plowed or, or snowpacked, snow covered, you still have to slow down. The other issue out on the coast, we have a coastal flood advisory. This includes uh, all the way from Gloucester, Cape Ann, down to Situate in Plymouth. Between 1 and 5 a.m., that's the time of high tide early on Wednesday morning. There could be up to one foot inundation. Look at the wave action. I mean, these big waves coming in and hitting the wall in Situate. And I can tell you from experience, Dr. Nab, I know what it feels like. Take a look. We dug this out of the library. Monday, March 15th, or March 16th, rather, 2010. So we're going back about 11 years, and I was standing out there. This is a huge nor'easter. It was a slow mover. I was live for the Weather Channel and NBC on Long Island on Saturday. Then I drove all night from Long Island to Situate. That's a whole different story. I will never do that again. <laughs> and then on Monday, we go out to the seawall by the, uh, by the um, lighthouse, and we were out there for high tide for about four or five hours. They hit the wall, they come on up, and I would go like this to try to keep the water up from getting inside my clothing because the water temperature was a very crisp 39 degrees. So it was a continuous cold shower of salt water. But you get an idea of the force of the water. Once the tide went out, the, the waves didn't hit the wall, and so you didn't have the oversplash. But uh, much like this time around, none of the water got in the homes uh, where we were because the houses were up on stilts.
Yeah, and Situate is situated very precariously just south of Boston uh, with a harbor, you know, and near the opening of that harbor, you have a straight shot to the east with nothing stopping the energy from the Atlantic Ocean. So you get in these nor'easters, the, the fetch, you know, the ocean being pushed by the wind mm -hmm. for hundreds of miles offshore straight into that coastline perpendicularly, and that's what builds up the wave action. And nearly every nor'easter, that particular location really takes it on the chin. Yeah, on Sunday, we were actually in the harbor in town, and it wasn't nearly as bad. We had right. no idea what was going uh, on out on the beach road. And then Monday, we find out, and you mentioned about water rushing away a car. The waves also tend to bring up some small rocks and pedal pebbles. So that's another issue, Dr. Nab. Geologist Mike Seidel, he's been reporting for us tonight outside of the Boston area. Mike, what a difference. The gradient there was so impressive as forecast. But gosh, from an inch at the coast to, to feet of snow inland, just a wild setup across the Boston metro area. Yeah, because of the coastal front, only about 9 or 10 miles separated a couple of inches of slush to 18 to 20 inches of snow. Here in Bedford, uh, not far from 95, give you an idea of where we're sitting northwest of Austin, uh, we've got 17 to 18 inches out here. Just a beautiful scene this evening. It's quiet. It's about 30 degrees. Uh, no really wind chill. And it's just pristine. The snow virtually untouched except by yours truly. Quickly, I want to take you back to last night. We were in Lowell for five hours, and I can tell you it was just snowing and blowing the whole time. We were picking up one to two inches an hour. The Lowell measurements coming in at 20.2 and 24.0. So you get an idea. It was a big, big storm. But again, the official records are at Logan Airport with 1.2. So <laughs> it was nothing. Now, how do you get rid of the snow? You can plow it. You can blow it. You can wait for spring, or you can get this. How about a snow melter? Yes, a company uh, out of uh, Canada makes these. You've probably seen these at airports. I've seen them at airports. Minneapolis, Reagan National has them. A lot of uh, northern airports. What they do is they get the snow in the front loaders and throw it into the snow eater. It's uh, heated by uh, uh, diesel. And then it comes out the other end as just cold water. It can do, this particular one can do 60 tons of snow an hour and you end up with about 240 gallons of water coming out that pipe at the bottom and that's about 150 to 300 cubic feet depending on the consistency of the snow so uh, they took care of that whole parking lot that snow is all gone uh, but that uh, that machine you see there I saw one on eBay hundred and twenty thousand dollars used let's go up to New York City boy they're digging out too Let's check in, get the latest, the recap from Weather Channel meteorologist Chris. So, uh, gosh, it's a breezy night, a cold night as well. Want to go now to meteorologist Mike Seidel. He's in Bedford, Massachusetts, just northwest of Boston. Mike, probably not the biggest storm in that area that they've ever seen, but the, you got to get the shovels and the snowblowers going anyway. This is a significant storm when you got to, you know, do the work to clear everything out. Anytime you get double-digit snowfalls in the Northeast, that's a pretty good storm in the big cities. Now, officially, it was 1.2 because they use Logan Airport. But on the coast, where it is breezy tonight, the totals were next to nothing, especially down on the south coast, the south shore, the uh, Cape and the islands. But out here in Bedford, 18 inches, we're going to walk down the path. And you see this nice slice here? They used a snowblower, and it just brings it on each side. They blew it on this side. But look how deep the snow is right up to my knee. Just gives you an idea of what fell out here in the suburbs. And right now, we're getting a few little flurries. This has been a long duration storm. And I want to take you back to last night. We were in Lowell, Massachusetts, getting uh, just whacked by one to two inches an hour, wind gust 25 plus miles an hour. And they ended up with, depending on what observation you look at, 20.2 or 24 inches of snow, Carl. So now we've got another nor'easter, at least if you believe the European. The GFS takes a storm off the coast. So, Carl, what are you buying? What are you buying tonight? Well, you know, that's uh, a really, that, that's a tricky question. It used to be that we would refer to the European model as EF Hutton or the answer key. And, you know, I'm not so sure that that is necessarily <laughs> the case anymore. I know the GFS has improved considerably, but wow, are they in different camps. 
on this one. I mean, they just really couldn't be we more different. Yeah, but we've, you know, it's only what, uh, I lost track of Tuesday night, and this is a, a kind of a Sunday snowstorm, yeah. if you believe the European, for the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. So we still have uh, several days to go, and the wind energy, what we call the vorticity, is way up, uh, I think, in Alaska. So that's got to drop down. So we, a lot of things come in play, the phasing. Yep. But uh, we'll see who gets the W this time. We should know that in just a few more days. Because if the European gets the W, we're going to see more of this. Yeah, should be uh, a lot clearer in just uh, probably a couple of days, uh, Mike. Thank you so much. And let's uh, show you what's going on. Welcome back to the suburbs of Boston. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel in Bedford, Mass. Well, we've got a few uh, flakes coming down right now. You can't see them on camera. Not that we need any more snow. Isn't this a pretty scene out here? Especially when the snow's gone, everything gets green. You can go back out there and hang out. And I'm sure there have been more than a few couples married back there on the gazebo. But tonight, we're right around 30 degrees. We've got 18 inches of snow here on the ground. And it is kind of hard to walk through. It's a good workout. Boy, I mean, you got to... It's like walking on the, the sand at the beach, away from the water where it's firmer. But you get a sense of how deep this snow is. Now, temperatures the next couple of days are going to be above freezing, so we're going to see some melting. We may get some rain on Friday. We're not expecting a lot of rain, and a high in the mid-40s is not going to be a big melt. And then we're watching the weather maps for a potential nor'easter on Sunday and Sunday night. That would take uh, place and dump snow from, again, D.C., Baltimore, all the way up uh, into Boston. But that remains to be seen because, Carl, we've got uh, two models, and both have a storm, but one takes it out to sea. The European brings it up the coast, and we'll see how things work out in the next couple of days. But uh, be aware, if the European verifies, we're going to have a very windy storm, and it's going to be a quick mover. It's not going to be uh, hanging around like this one did. Yeah, that would be the, the critical difference. We may be looking at a very intense storm and very heavy snowfall rates, but not something that goes on for two straight days uh, over the same areas. It would be primarily Sunday in the areas that just got hit so hard and then uh, moving up.